Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Peter Chats. Why do people always do this in thumbnails or look really surprised in thumbnails? I, I don't really get it. It's not like there's some crazy secret that they're trying to keep. I always wonder why that became a trend. I see that a lot on YouTube. It's like... Anyways, so uh, <laughs> let's get into it. So after I did the video on how to rent in New York City, all these other stories suddenly came to me and I figured I had to follow up with a part two. So these are like stories or things that me and my wife went through uh, while renting in New York City. When I first moved to New York, I had three roommates and we just had finished college and we were trying to find our first place to live. You know, I guess at that time, this was before the great financial crisis, at that time, the only place that suited us, they wanted six months upfront deposit um, or some like really crazy terms from our guarantors. So unfortunately, we had to pony up six months upfront rent as a deposit. You know, luckily I had some savings for my internship the summer before as well as a signing bonus. I think most of my roommates had the same and maybe like one of the guys had to borrow some money from his parents but we did end up ponying up six months of rent in advance. Now by month seven, uh, we told them that, you know, we're not gonna obviously pay more rent, just take it, just draw it down from the deposit that, that we gave them uh, the six months in advance and that's what they did. Anyways, that was kind of a unique experience. Uh, a little bit surprised we had to put forth so much cash up front. I don't think the market is as strict as, as it was back then. Um, so hopefully that's something that you don't have to experience. It should be just a one month rent and a security deposit that's equal to one month. But sometimes the security deposit is actually a lot less uh, than a month these days. It can be like a thousand bucks security deposit or even 500 bucks security deposit uh, with the one month um, you know, paid up front. Now you probably never think about how high you live from sea level, but I remember when Hurricane Sandy happened, most of downtown Manhattan was just flooded. We were living in the theater district at the time, and when we walked from 7th Avenue and 50 something street all the way down towards the west side of Manhattan, we could actually see the water like flooding on the western side of Manhattan. But as we walked back up to our apartment, it was completely dry, you know, there, there was no issues at all. Electricity was fine, you know, everything was working. And I think it's because we're actually at a pretty good height above sea level. So if you are a little bit worried that, you know, there might be another storm or another flooding that's gonna happen in New York City, then I would rent, um, you know, more north of Manhattan or as opposed to being south. I remember I had a friend who lived in downtown Manhattan in one of those new skyscrapers and the building was completely flooded. The whole basement was flooded. All the electricals that control the elevators were flooded. He had to move his clothes and TV by walking up and down. I think it was a, some ridiculous amount of flights. It might've been like 20 or 30 flights of stairs. And he had to abandon all of his furniture there because the building was just uninhabitable after Sandy. So keep that in mind. Um, if you are worried about storms, you know, know how high above sea level uh, your building is. Construction. So there may be construction ha happening outside your building or there could be construction happening inside your building. For one of the apartments that I lived in in New Yorkville, they were doing renovations in the unit right above my unit. And we had exposed brick walls, but with the brick walls met the ceiling, there was a, a, a slight gap, and I guess it wasn't filled. And so when they were doing construction upstairs, a lot of dust was just raining down along that gap, all over our floors. It went on our bed, went on our couch, and it was just a mess, and it went on our kitchen too. And you know, we called management, they, they fixed it once, but it wasn't a complete fix, and, and there was still like dust kind of raining down. If you do have construction happening in your building, uh, just be mindful of, of any issues that may cause, and they may shut down the water for periods of time, it could be a lot of noise. Um, that's going on as they're doing the renovation. In terms of construction outside um, your building, there's, for a certain time period, there's a lot of construction on 2nd Avenue because they're trying to build the 2nd Avenue subway line. So if you lived close to there, you couldn't really you know, park like a moving truck outside and there's probably gonna be, be noise pollution um, during the daytime. So if you stayed home during the day for work, it may not be very pleasant um, with construction going on. So just keep that in mind um, if, if you're looking for an apartment. Basement flooding. Now, I only lived in the basement once in New York City and it was an apartment that had the first floor and basement combined. 
One day it was raining really badly. You know, apparently the sewer system in New York City, it's not very great. And something happened in the basement and it just started to flood. It was probably only two, three inches of water. And in normal circumstances, when it wasn't raining as heavily, the pipes there would have drained it out, no problem. But in this case, there was a hiccup with the pipe and we just had a couple inches of water and it flooded everything in the basement. There was a mold buildup and all of stuff was just ruined. And, you know, and the other thing living in basements in New York is that it can be very damp down there. So you need to buy a dehumidifier which can cost a lot of money running on utilities. So I think after that experience, I just vowed never to ever live in a basement unit ever again. In fact, I just said I would never want to live anywhere that was lower than three stories high. Mice and rats. Now, I know that you probably see a lot of mice and rats in the subway train tracks. I unfortunately almost stepped on one one time visiting an apartment, and I had a mice actually crawl over my shoe one time as I was leaving an apartment visit. It's pretty nasty, but it's unavoidable like outside in the streets when dealing with like, mice and rats in New York City. In terms of like inside, like your unit, make sure to check for droppings. So look under like the kitchen cabinets, and if you see like little, you know, little black droppings, then there's a sign that there was mice in the past. Um, they may or may not have sealed the holes where the mice crawled in from. So just be cautious with that. And if you can ask about that and you can get a good answer, that'd be great. One thing I realized is that if you live on a high enough floor, there's a much less likelihood of having any rodent problems. I remember one of the apartments I lived in with three roommates, we were all pretty messy as guys. We lived on the 11th floor in a pre-war building. And even though it was kind of a mess, there was probably like food crumbs everywhere. We never had any rodent problems. You know, there was no observable droppings at least that I saw in the kitchen whatsoever. Slanted floors. You, you may or may not be aware of this, but a lot of buildings in Brooklyn, especially brownstones, are actually sinking a little bit. <laughs> Apparently, it's still structurally sound, but they are sinking just a bit into the ground. We visited one apartment in Williamsburg where it was visible that when you walked in, it felt like it, it, it didn't seem real. Like the floor was was very slanted. It wasn't just one degree, but it felt like it was five to ten degrees, like slanted. Apparently, that, that's just normal. Like there's a lot of a lot of brownstones in Brooklyn where the floors will be a little slanted. I guess it's still structurally safe to live there, but just keep that in mind. So if you do visit an apartment and you notice that it's slanted, don't be surprised. Packages. So some buildings, um, they don't have a doorman and they don't have like a visible lobby space. It can be tough to get packages delivered to your home. Oftentimes you have to be home to actually receive the packages or else it gets sent back. In two cases, I lived in buildings where there were lobbies with mailboxes and a space for packages to be dropped off, but no doorman. And I actually had no issues there with receiving packages from Amazon or UPS or like FedEx, or USPS. Um, in some other cases, I lived in buildings where there's no lobby space for packages to be dropped off. For whatever reason, I had a tough time getting my packages delivered. So obviously, if you're someone that is constantly ordering packages, you may or may not be home all the time. You might want to consider the doorman situation or the lobby situation in your building. And also, if you do get packages, because of, you know, just because of package, of package that um, be around to kind of pick it up before someone comes by and picks it up for you. I mean, one time, really randomly, I had a package stolen from me and they literally took a pan out of a box and just left me with an empty box. It was annoying, but it was kind of silly that someone actually went out of their way to steal a pan from me, like a frying pan. But it happens, um, so just be mindful of that. Broken elevators. So elevators malfunction pretty frequently. Um, in office buildings I've worked at, in almost every apartment that I lived in, they had elevators, they always had malfunctions. Now, if the building has two elevators, one that's a service elevator and one that's a passenger elevator, then you can always take the service elevator if the passenger elevator malfunctions. But even in that building, there was a couple of instances where both elevators malfunctioned, and so we'd have to walk up 11 flights of stairs to get to our apartment, and, and that's not very fun. So when you do um, live in a building with elevators, uh, be mindful of how many elevators there are and how high you are, because there's a high probability that you're probably gonna need to make that trip up the stairs you know, sooner or later. Doorman tips. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but at the end of every year around Christmas time, you're expected to tip anyone that works to take care of the building. So the doorman, the super, or any cleaning people that pick up the trash or clean any you know common areas of the building. I normally tipped about 50 to $100 per person. I don't really know what the norm was, um, but I got the general sense that that's what made these people happy. And I've gotten the feedback from them that I actually you know, gave a little bit more than uh, what some other people gave. So if you want to have a good relationship with your doorman or the super, um, you know, make sure that you tip a little bit more. Create a second bank account. I don't have a high trust of landlords and management companies, to be honest. So whenever they hold rent from 
my bank account, I made sure that I created a second bank account, a separate bank account, and just put in enough money for the rent to be paid. I just didn't like the idea of them having you know, access to my primary bank account. So if you are concerned like I was about them being too close to your money, I would create a second separate bank account to pay the rent out. Balconies. So balconies are just a nice luxury to have. Um, sometimes if you have like stinky workout clothes like I did, you don't want to have it laying around in your, in your apartment. Sometimes I just threw it on the balcony and uh, just let it air out there before I had time to do the laundry. To be honest, I never actually hung on my balcony at all. For one of my apartments, I had a pretty nice balcony kind of situation, but you know, realistically, I, I don't know how many people actually hang out in the balcony. I mean, it was a building that had probably six, seven, eight balconies, and I rarely saw people sitting out on their balcony. I saw like bikes stored out there, I saw strollers stored out on the balconies, but it actually doesn't get used as much as you would think. And so if you are looking at an apartment and one has a balcony and one doesn't, I wouldn't value the balcony apartment that much better than the apartment without the balcony if all of the things are pretty comparable. Alright, worst case scenario, if you have a major dispute with your landlord um, and you've tried to be as civil as possible, as rational as possible, you can always complain to the DA. The district's attorney's office for New York City has a place on their website where you can file a complaint against your landlord. I did this for one of my landlords because I found out as I was moving out that they were notorious for not giving you back your security deposit. There was no issues with my apartment, that was just the way they were. And most people don't fight back. Most people just kind of leave because it's just difficult to pursue any legal avenue to get your security deposit back. But we were leaving New York City at the time, so we didn't have plans to go back and live in New York City. So we didn't, we weren't worried that we needed a recommendation from a landlord to get into a new place. You know, we weren't worried about potentially being put on some like blacklist or something. So we actually complained to the DA. You know, we got the landlord to pay us you know, probably like 70 to 80 percent of the security deposit back it's better than nothing but this is a last resort scenario that you can take if your landlord is really just completely unscrupulous is not doing the right thing at all uh, you can complain to the da's office uh, so hopefully these extra little tidbits um they're entertaining and then they help you a bit in thinking about your new apartment if you have any other questions and i don't know if i actually have a part three in me but any other things that actually come up i will make a part three when people ask enough questions and i have to think of things that i couldn't think of for part one or part two i will do a part three but most likely this is probably it for this specific kind of series on how to rent in new york city and what things to look out for if you found this helpful if you found this but moly entertaining, please subscribe, please drop a comment, please like. Um, this goes a long way in helping uh, grow the channel and helping me do more videos. It helps the YouTube algorithms um, to help us get views and succeed. Uh, thank you so much. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.